Good morning. What spiritual condition does Paul anticipate the churches will be in when Jesus' second coming arrives? Today we're in 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 11 to 13. Let's read. Now may our Lord and Father himself and our Lord Jesus Christ direct our way to you, and may the Lord make you increase and abound in love to one another and to all, just as we do to you so that he may establish your hearts blameless in holiness before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. So there you see it right in the text. What is God's plan for his people? He wants us to be ready when Jesus comes. When the second coming of Jesus happens, he wants us to be uh, blameless, our hearts to be blameless in holiness. That's Important because, you know, in a lot of churches today, holiness is, is either frowned upon or seen to be weird, uh, or holiness is some, some stray concept, or we're going to redefine it. Holiness is never quite what it, it, it is to be in the Bible, holiness. To be sanctified, to be set apart to God, and to have His Holy Spirit working inside of us so that instead of being conformed to this world, we are transformed, that our minds are renewed. So a people who are holy are going to be a people who aren't going to just be pale echoes of all the stuff that they see on the internet or that they see in their local city or see next door or the crazy things that are happening. Uh, people that are there whose hearts are blameless in holiness, those are people who are ready to see Jesus when he comes. Holiness is a very special gift and it's a very special goal and it's a goal that every Christian should have. Why wouldn't we seek his presence and seek his holiness when it's available to us? Are the things of this world that awesome that, that we would trade trade the, the blessings of heaven for the red lentil stew of this world? Yesterday I had lentils, and it was quite delicious, but nothing to trade heaven for. We want the blessing of God, and so we need to seek after holiness. Let's pray together. Dear Father in heaven, help us, even though other Christians might not be focusing on this or emphasizing it, we're not, we know we're not saved by our holiness, we're saved by Jesus and his holiness. But Lord, help us to be seeking you, to be open to you, be, be renewing us in heart and mind, be transforming us, Lord, be washing us by your Holy Spirit so that we are a holy people, a people who can actually witness to the power of your gospel, the power of, of your kingdom to heal and shape and reshape us and change us and help us to be what we've always wanted to be. So please, Lord, bless us as we give us a desire, a strong desire, so that we are seeking holiness, so that we're ready when Jesus comes. Please, Lord, may it be true for us. Paul's prayer for the Thessalonians, may it also be our prayer for our local church. Bless us this way, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Holiness is a great privilege, so let's seek for it with all of our hearts.